Hello everyone, good to see you again. My name is Ankle Milman. Our website is www.cwowi.eu and stands for Church Without Walls International. It's a network of house churches worldwide and a relationship-based faith. Getting to know the Lord, growing in Him. It's all about uh, discipleship, growing in the Lord, becoming more like Him in relationship with others. If you are interested in that, go to our website. You find a lot of articles in many uh, European languages translated. So go to cwowi.eu. There's also another website for those who are uh, who understand English. You probably do, otherwise you wouldn't listen to me. That's cwowi.org. Many videos about how church and uh, how to do it what is house church and so on and about uh, your christian life and how to grow in him well today i want to talk to you about a truth if you really understand this truth and if you really have a revelation about that it will end your struggle to sin it will end your struggle with the devil and whatever you think he is because sometimes we think the devil is almost as as powerful as god is but he is not well last week we celebrated eastern i think it was in the many parts of the world and here in the netherlands years ago it started uh, well they had a huge play on tv actually in on on the live live on uh, on the streets of one of the cities and it's still done every year. It's called The Passion, and you probably heard about it. So they kind of play out um, what happened to Jesus, um, how he was betrayed and then was uh, brought to the cross, and how he hung on the tree on the cross, and how he died for our sins. And that is very wonderful, but it always saddened me because it ends there. And that's not the end of the story because Easter is about that Jesus is alive. That he's not dead anymore, but that he was raised from the dead. And that he was the firstborn and we will be raised from the dead too. Amen. But okay, it's good that we appreciate what Jesus did on the cross. And that's very important because what he did, he, uh, he paid for sins. He paid... With his blood, he purchased us with his blood, says the Bible, 1 Corinthians 6, 6, 20. So actually, we are not our own anymore, right? We are bought with a price. So the one who buys us, who bought us, we uh, he owns us, right? But still, he gives us the free choice to live for him or not for him. So, and I've heard many people say who are not born again yet, I don't think it's fair, you know, that someone else pays the price and dies for you because you are the one that sinned. And I understand that they say that, well, it should be me. I should be hung on the tree. Why did Jesus have to die for us? And I understand the way they think. But, you know, in the mind of God, it was not only Jesus who hung on the cross, but in his mind, we were there. We were, we died with Christ, together with Christ. That's amazing. There are many scriptures in the New Testament, in Ephesians and Colossians, about together with Christ, with him or in him. And that's what I want to talk to, to you uh, about today. For instance, Galatians 2.20, Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. So Paul understood that when Christ hang, hung there on the cross, it was all of us, we were there too, in him. So we died also on the cross, but not physically, but in God's mind, we were there too. And then Paul says, okay, it's not longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And not only that we were crucified with him, but he also says in Colossians 2, 12 and 13, you can look it up later, you were buried together with him in baptism. So we were buried. He hung on the cross. We were there. We were crucified with him. He was buried. We were buried together with him in baptism. Romans 6, 4 says that too. We were buried with him through baptism into death. And actually, I looked up that scripture, uh, if uh, Romans 6, because... He, there's a lot what he says in here. Uh, when you go to verse 11, it says, Romans 6, 11, it says, Reckon yourselves to be dead, indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Uh, is that the right scripture? Let me see. Yeah, reckon yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus our, our Lord. Why does he say dead to sin? Because we died with him. And the word reckon means in Greek to, to count a deed that is already done. It's a deed already done. It's a fact that has been established. It simply needs your affirmation and it needs your recognition. So in the mind of Christ, who you were in the past 
has no longer any claim to who you are now in Christ because that old person is absolutely dead. You hung there, you were crucified with him, but you were also buried with him. Wow. And the word dead is the word necros that describes a corpse, just as real as a corpse in the morgue or at the cemetery. You know, it's life is gone. You can see when you've seen a person who is dead, you know that person is not in there anymore. That person is dead. It's gone. Uh, you can't breathe life into it anymore. It, it's permanently disconnected from uh, to life. And Paul said that the person is dead indeed. And indeed means that is a fact. It's undeniable. So it's so it's true. As <laughs> it's undeniable. So when we came to Christ, and when uh, and when we recognize that fact that he died for us, or we were buried with him, that old person is indeed dead. Is powerless. Has no power over us. Now we are in him. He rendered the old man dead. So we are not an improved person, a version of the person you used to be. Who you are right now in Christ is a completely brand new person. So we were not only buried with him in baptism. Um, Romans 6, 4 says that too. But just as Christ was raised from the dead, you remember you were in him and he was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we all show, so should walk in newness of life. So he was raised, so we are raised. We were raised together with him. Ephesians 2, 5 says, he made us alive with Christ. So when Christ was raised from the dead, you were raised from the dead. Colossians 3, verse 4, 1 and 1 till 5 says, if then you were raised with Christ, you were raised with Christ. It says, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on things on the earth. Why not? Because you are dead to sin. You are dead to the things of the world. You are now raised with Christ. So seek those things which are above. Put your mind on them. Okay, a lot of struggle with sin is because our mind. You know, we think about those things. Because the, in our flesh, there's still the ability to sin, but we do not have to do that. We can say that old person who, who used to gamble, who used to curse, who used to use foul language or who used to lie to another person, that person is dead. I am a brand new person. I'm not going to do that anymore. So uh, Paul says in Colossians to the Colossians, that's by the way, that's interesting because the city of Colossians actually located in modern uh, Turkey, it was filled with paganism and there were uh, uh, worldly lifestyles, immorality, and so on. And what did Paul, by the way, what did he pray for those saints? What did he, uh, um, how, what did he say to them? You know, you have to struggle with your, uh, or embrace who you were. You can't help it. There's just a, a weakness in your body. Just embrace it and go on, and God will love you anyway. No, first of all, in the first uh, chapter, he prayed for them. Uh, what did he pray for them? That they may be filled with the knowledge of his will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That they might walk worthy of the Lord. Fully pleasing to him. Strengthened or empowered with all might. Uh, according to his glorious power. So he says you can be strengthened with the might. With the power of God. Right? And you can be pleasing to him. Fully pleasing to him. So he was, pray he was praying that they would understand that. That they uh, will, would be understand and filled with the knowledge of his will in, in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Go back to Colossians. Uh, he says, okay, you are raised. So set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Why? He says, and for you died. You died, right? Christ was crucified. You were crucified. He was buried. You were buried. So you died. He says, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. And that's an amazing scripture that your life is hidden with Christ in God. I believe it was Corrie ten Boom, an evangelist, that she always pictures that, that you you are safe, you are in the hand of God, not only you, but first you are with, hidden with Christ and then together you are hidden in God. So there's nothing what the devil can do to you. You are safe, you are secure, you are in him. And then back to Colossians, he says, okay, therefore, because your life is hidden with Christ in God, Therefore, put to death your members who are on the earth because you died, because you are a new person right now. You put to death your members who are which are on the earth in which you once walked but, and in which you once lived. Now you yourselves are to put off all these things, anger, rage, 
malice, filthy language. Do not lie to one another. And then so, sometimes you think, yeah, but the devil is, 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 is triggering me and I can't help it because of my grandparents. They had that weakness. A, a generation of people were always lying or anger or whatever. You know, he says, you yourself, you have to put off all those things, anger and rage, filthy language, since you have put off the old man with his deeds and you have put on the new man. Amazing. When you go to Colossians, uh, you're still in Colossians, I hope. In verse 13, he says, he has delivered us, has, past tense, right? He has delivered or rescued us from the power of darkness. And the word power is the authority of the authority of darkness. So darkness, the devil, the demons, they do not have any authority over you, any power over you. The only power they have over you is when you give them that power, is when you start thinking those thoughts that they want you to thought when you when they want you to be afraid when they want you to be scared and you 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 think okay i should be scared oh this is this is scary the devil is just manipulating me and making me uh, afraid of this and so on and then you open up the door no he has no authority what do you do with the devil and demons you tell them to go you tell them that they are defeated that jesus defeated them at the cross why they have no power anymore over you. And not only he rescued us from those powers, from his authority, but he transferred us into the kingdom of the son of his love. So we are not part of his kingdom anymore. We are part of the kingdom of God. Christ lives in us. And therefore you set your mind on the things above. Do not think on the, uh, do not set your minds on the thing of this world or think ahead of how you can sin or what you can do. And if you miss it, you said, Father, forgive me, please cleanse me with your blood and he will do so. But you walk in newness of life. That's what Paul says in Romans 6, 4. You know, Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. You should walk in newness of life. It's a decision and you have the power of God, the, his power. And then when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit will give you that power to do so. But the big uh, key to living in victory is understanding who you are in Christ understanding that when Christ hung, hung, hung on the cross, that you were together with him. You were there too. You died with him and you were buried with him, but you were also raised with him to a new life. And you are completely new. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away and all things have become new. That is the reality. That is what happened. Uh, that's the spiritual reality. Now you have to walk it out and you can do so because he will give you the strength and do not think I cannot do that. Do not think this is something other Christians walk in it. So it will, will be okay. Or I need uh, whatever help uh, to deal with my past or whatever. Understand that your past is your past because it has passed, right? You are a new creation right now. Okay. I hope that you understand that. I hope that um, it makes things clear. If you are not sure, if you have questions, you can always email me. Go to cwowi.eu and I hope to see you next time. Be blessed. Bye-bye.